So that is really, really useful when it comes to the strategy, right? When you're trying to build a strategy for customer experience. But strategy is only going to take you so far because the execution on this is going to matter. Because ultimately, customer experience from the customer service perspective is really driven by the execution of that service. So one of the things that we're seeing in a lot of data is that for the very first time, customer experience has overtaken price and it's overtaken product in terms of the reasons that customers choose to do business with a company. That means it doesn't matter if your product is less expensive and it doesn't matter if your product is better. If you can't deliver the experience that your customers are expecting, they're not going to choose to do business with you, right? So that's why we talk a lot about customer experience and customer service is a critical part of that, right? It's that execution piece of giving customers what they want when they want it that creates that sense of experience. So the big thing that I want to think about for, or the, the thing that I want to sort of broach for everyone here is that this feedback loop and building structure around this feedback loop and making sure that it's easy for your customers to tell you what they think and to tell you what they're feeling about the way that you are interacting with them is absolutely critical. Because when you think about customers that don't do business with you, more than 90% of them aren't going to tell you why. Right? They're just, they're just not. And that may be because they don't have a way to. Because if you think, think about it as a human, right? We're all humans. Everybody's a human, right? I'm getting like zero nods. Yeah. Everybody's a human, right? Okay, great. So if everybody's a human, if you are really angry, then you'll say something, right? If you are really irate, annoyed, whatever your adjective is, if you are feeling that passionate about it, you will absolutely say something. But if you're just kind of like, that was hard. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go over here. You're not going to tell the company what was hard. You're not going to explain yourself because it's too much trouble. So you're not going to hear very much from people that are having a bad experience because either you didn't ask them or it's not bad enough for them to complain. It doesn't mean it's not, not working for you. So be open to that feedback. Create systematic ways to solicit that feedback, whether it's as part of the buying process, whether it's in every customer service interaction, having some, some kind of survey to say, how was it? It's easy enough to click a button 1 to 10. How did that service interaction go? The thing that's really cool about being a startup and starting from scratch on all of these things is that technology levels the playing field for you. So if you are working to connect your product or service into your customer's life so you can deliver on those expectations of a great experience, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And the first one that I really want to emphasize is building a process. One of the things that we see a lot in startups, and it, in, in my product we deal with startups a lot, is that they think about we need to keep track of things, but they don't think about building a process around things. And keeping track of things, spreadsheets are super useful for that, right? If you, to who here uses Google Docs? Right? Most people use Google Docs, either professionally or personally. Right? And it's easy to everybody, for everybody to get into a collaborative spreadsheet and type stuff in. Right? But it doesn't trigger anything. It doesn't create a process. It doesn't make sure that everything is caught. The same goes for a shared inbox. Right? One of the things that we see, especially when it comes to customer service, is that the first thing people do is they set up support at mycompany.com. Right? And that's great. Right? Sometimes when you start, that just comes to the CEO, but it says support at mycompany.com, so it feels like customer service. The problem is, as soon as you get past that one person using an inbox and you start sharing it with two people, that is really not what email was designed for. Right? It's really hard to keep track of all those requests. It's really hard to create a sense of ownership or assign emails to particular people without creating a lot of extra noise and a lot of extra work. So when we think about building a process, make sure that there's a way for you to leverage technology to 
make that process work for your company and set yourself up for success from the start instead of when you're in the middle and things are breaking, right? When we think about customer service, we also think about self-service. So that, you know, a, frequent, a set of frequently asked questions that you, can dis that you can have as part of your website can deflect a whole lot of questions coming your way. And it'll be pretty easy for you to figure out what those questions are at the start, right? 80% of those questions are coming in, should have pretty consistent answers that don't really depend on who the customer is. Make that kind of thing public. Make it something that you can send people to, that they can learn how to do that. One of the things that we see statistically is that almost three quarters of customers, before they reach out to a company, go to the internet first. Right? They go on their mobile device and they type in whatever it is they're looking for, and they find the answer to their question without having to contact the company, which means anything that you do from email or phone or anything like that, you should see as an escalation point. You should start with that self-service piece and then recognize that if a customer is reaching out to you, it means they weren't able to resolve the issue on their own. And all of this, again, comes back to totally valuing your customer's time. So the reason that we encourage companies to start thinking about this really early is that it's really hard to keep customers happy while you're going fast if you don't have the process and structure in place to do that. One of the things that starts happening is customers fall through the cracks, or they'll email you two or three times to say, hey, I'm still waiting, I'm still waiting, I'm still waiting. And it means that anybody that you're thinking of as a customer service rep or an agent or whatever it is that you want to call them is probably drowning, right? They don't have the tools that they need to be able to be successful in churn through cases to make sure that customers aren't falling through the, the cracks and they're getting consistent, correct responses in a timely manner. And last, if you don't have the processes and you don't have all of those elements in place so that you're ready to scale as your business grows, it's, it's harder to do that down the line than it is when you start out. Now, there's going to be sort of a cadence and when do you want to do this because of what are the problems that are directly in front of you versus what are the problems on your periphery. But make sure that as you're thinking about what are the kinds of processes and structure that I want to put in place, that they scale. One of the things that we've learned, post-its don't scale. They just don't. Sorry. They're pretty. They're very colorful, but they don't scale.